Welcome everyone. Our presentation this particular hour is one of the most controversial, difficult topic that many people think it is really difficult. In fact, this topic is doing a lot of problems in the Adventist Church. And not only the Adventist Church, but many churches around. So, this is the second part of the first series. Because today we are going to discuss the topic, the Trinity of Old Testament. It means to say we are going to deal with the revelation of God. Because it's easy to find Trinitarian statement verses in the Bible in the New Testament. However, many have a problem why people cannot believe on Trinity because they said it cannot be uh, sustained in the Word of God in the Old Testament. Well, let's try because that's really what is happening. Today, the Adventist Church all around the world is facing many falls of every wind of doctrine that confuse and destroy faith and the confidence of many. Among others is the question of Trinity, particularly the divinity and personality of the Holy Spirit. Connected to this problem is the new idea today, the movement called One God, within the circle of Adventism that question the divinity of Jesus, which hold that those who worship Jesus are committing idolatry because the Bible asserts that there is only one God. This is the most destructive, horrible movement that will rock Adventism in these last days. So in this presentation, we try to study the different ways on how the one God revealed himself in the Old Testament. The second, this is the second part of the series, Oneness, Twoness, and the Threeness, Revelation of God. So, God in the Bible is revealed as an eternal being. The word eternal and everlasting or forever in the scripture, when it is predicated to the subject God, means no beginning, no end, as an attribute of eternity of God. God is eternal being. The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Deuteronomy 33, 27. Even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Psalm 90, verse 2. Now to our God, the Father, be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Philippians 4, 20. So God the Father is eternal. Now, the King Eternal is immortal, invisible to God who alone is wise. Be the honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. 1 Timothy 1.17 Jesus also is eternal. Christ, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And to whom be the glory forever and ever. Hebrews 13.8.21 So, Let's look at the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit as an eternal God and person. The Holy Spirit is eternal. For he may abide with you forever. John 14, 17. How much more? With the blood of Christ through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot. Cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Hebrews 9, 14. So, with this text, the eternity of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is affirmed in Scripture. Therefore, they are of equal substance and being. Only eternal God gives eternal life. The Father, God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son, according to 1 John 5.11. The Son declares, I give them eternal life that they shall never perish. John 10, 28. The Holy Spirit, as Jesus says, is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh, nothing. The word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. 
John 6.33, and Paul affirms, but the Spirit gives life. 2 Corinthians 3.6. So, we find here one God in three persons, co-equal, co-existing, co-powerful, but yet assume different rules. So we need to understand that because many have been questioned that the Holy Spirit is not God, is not eternal, is not person. Let's look at here. God the Father gives the Son and the Holy Spirit. We need to understand that. Okay? God the Father gives both His Son and His Spirit as a gift for our salvation. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. We know that. Even we close our eyes, John 3, 16. But let us remember also it says, And if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him. Luke eleven thirteen. So Jesus is given by God, and the Holy Spirit was given also to man to make that to tell us that God is a giver because the Holy Spirit is only given to those who ask. So, this is what Paul says in Romans. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. It gives. It was given by God, both Jesus and the Holy Spirit. But the first was given was Jesus. Then after Pentecost, the fullness of the giving of the Holy Spirit was manifested. So we are witnesses, these things. And so also in the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey. Acts 5.32 when the gift of the Holy Spirit from God the Father is the guarantee that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. 1 Corinthians 2.12 For the Holy Spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 says that. So, the Father and the Son works through sanctification. What is the work of God the Father? To sanctify humanity. What's the work of Jesus? To sanctify humanity. What's the work of the Holy Spirit? Is to sanctify those who accept Him that they will be sanctified. Listen. Now may the God that is the Father of peace Himself sanctify you completely. But you may hold the whole spirit, soul, body, Preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 So God the Father is sanctifying us. Now, let's look to Jesus. For therefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. Suffered outside the gate, that is in Hebrews 13.12 So we find the Father sanctified, the Son sanctified, but let's go. So, the Father and the Spirit, okay? We are bound to give thanks to God. Always for your brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Holy Spirit and belief in truth, 2 Thessalonians 2.13. So both Jesus and Spirit can sanctify and justify. Because it is clear in 1 Corinthians 6, 11, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Again, this is an irresistible revelation that the personality of one God is solidly presented, present, uh, presented in the Scripture. Making holy an empowerment of the believer. Okay? The Father, Son, and the Spirit, according to Paul, that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentile. Ministering of God and offering the Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. So we need to understand the works of the Father and the Son 
in saving humanity, sometimes presented in the same manner, but they have also distinctive ways in their role in the saving of humanity. So, 1 Peter 1 2 says, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience in the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. This takes the Father the Son, and the Spirit. But the work of the Holy Spirit was sanctified. And that's why there are many people had confused with this because they misunderstand. They are blinded by the enemy of God that is Satan. That's why they cannot see the Holy Spirit as a person, as a divine, as God. The Father and Son and Holy Spirit sanctified the believers so that they can walk in spirit, not by the flesh. Galatians 5.16 so, revelation of God as a person and a spirit. It is fundamental truth of revelation of God is that is God is a person. But at the same time, according to Jesus, God is a spirit. That is referring to the Father. And not those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. John 4 verse 24. So Jesus tells this about the Father. When the true worshiper will worship the Father in what? In spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such worship, Him. John 4.23 So the Spirit has no flesh and bones. Luke 24.29 But have form. That is why man is made in the image, in the likeness of God. Genesis 1.26 Yet we do not know what form. Even Jesus himself is God. And equally, Christ, the Lord of the Spirit. 2 Corinthians 3, 14, 16, and 17. Christ is a spirit for he lives in Paul, not in person. Galatians 2, 20. It is no longer I who live, that Jesus Christ who lives in me. Peter calls Jesus the spirit of Christ. 1 Peter 1.11 And Christ dwell in your hearts by faith. Ephesians 3.17 The revelation of the spirit of God. The spirit directs. Let's go now to the Old Testament. Because many have found that the Holy Spirit is scanty in reference on the activities as God. Look at these verses in Ezekiel chapter 1, verses 11, 12, and 20. Thus were the faces, their wing stretched upward, two wings of each, one touched one another, and took over their bodies, and each one went straight forward. They went whenever the spirit that is known in Hebrew wanted to go and did not turn when they went. Whenever the spirit wanted to go, they went because the spirit went. And the wells lifted up together with him, for the spirit of the living creature was in the will. What do you mean by this one? It is the Holy Spirit who directed the cherubim who was working in the sanctuary. So it is clear that the Holy Spirit is directing angels. We found that, that Jesus, the Father, directing angels, but this text is telling us that the Spirit is really directing the movement of the cherubims. So in Ezekiel 10, verses 3 to 5 and 15, the angels are called cherubim. And God who makes his angel spirit minister, ministers of flame of fire. That is Psalm 103, verses 4 and Hebrews 1, 7. The Holy Spirit speaks. Many people did not understand that. That's why the, alleg the, the allegation, the Holy Spirit is a wind, is a fire, is a breath. Those are metaphors. Those are metaphors. Symbolism. But look here. 
both Old Testament and New Testament, the Holy Spirit keep on speaking. The problem, many who read the Bible cannot see them because the devil blinded them. That's the reality. Okay? Look and see. So, first, let's see. Then the Spirit entered me. That's Ezekiel. He spoke to me. The Holy Spirit spoke. And he set me on my feet, and I heard him who spoke to me. And he said to me, Son of man. I am sending you to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation, and that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day, for they are impudent and stubborn children. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus saith the Lord God, for them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are a rebellious house, yet you will know that the prophet has been among them. Ezekiel 2, verses 2 to 5. Thus, the God the Father says, That says the Lord. And the Son, that says the Lord. The Holy Spirit, that says the Lord. Why can you not read this and understand? The Holy Spirit speak, commanded. Prophet Ezekiel. This is very clear. So, again, then the Holy Spirit lifted me up and brought me into the east gate of the Lord's house, which faces eastward. You know, there was abomination inside the temple. It is the Holy Spirit who brought Ezekiel and told him. And he said to me, Son of man, these are the men who devise iniquity and give wicked counsel in the city, who say the time is not near to build the houses. The city is from the cauldron, excuse me, and we are the meat. Therefore, prophecy to them, prophecy of the Son of Man. The Holy Spirit told Ezekiel to prophesy. He was talking. Can a fire talk? Can the wind talk? There's something wrong the way we understand. Remember, but Ezekiel in chapter is, we find the Holy Spirit show to Ezekiel the horrible abomination done inside the temple of God. Those abominations led them to be captive to Babylon six years later. This event in the temple. So the Holy Spirit manifested his work as an evidence of his close watch of individual or group of people activity in God's house. Look at again. The Holy Spirit shows all abomination done by the people of God in the temple to prophet Ezekiel. Then he said, then I looked and there was a likeness of appearance of fire, appearance of his waist downward from his waist upward, his appearance of brightness like an amber color of an amber, he stretched forth his hand and took me by the lock of my hair. And the Spirit lifted me between heaven and earth and brought me in the vision to God to Jerusalem, the door of the north gate, the inner court, where the seat of image of jealousy, which provoked jealousy. And behold, the glory of God in Israel was there, like a vision that I saw in a plain. Then he said to me, the Holy Spirit said, Son of man, lift your eyes now towards the north. So I lifted my eyes to the north, and there in the north altar gate, there was an image of jealousy in the entrance. Ezekiel 8, verses 2 to 5. It is the entire chapter of Ezekiel 8, the revelation and activity of the Holy Spirit. So the Lord speak. Then the hand of the Lord, this is Jesus. Was upon me, he said, Arise, go into the plain. There I shall talk with you. Then the Spirit entered me and set my feet and spoke with me and said, Go shut yourself inside the house. Here we find Jesus and the Holy Spirit communicating Ezekiel. And we found that in the book of Revelation. After Jesus speak, the Holy Spirit speak. 
So we need to understand this, my brothers and sisters. Look at that in the book of Revelation. Revelation 3.6 He who has ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. What did the Spirit say to the churches? The words of Jesus is the same work, words of the Spirit that he spoke to the seven churches. It is patterned in the book of Ezekiel. So Revelation chapter 2 and 3 is modeled how Jesus, how the Holy Spirit, together in the activities. Because many people just attribute he's a fire, he's a wind, he's an influence. These are nonsense. How could a wind make you a Christian? How could a fire change your character? We need to understand, my brothers, because after this presentation, I'm going to discuss the sin against the Holy Spirit which is part of that. Let's look at God the Father. Here we see the Holy Spirit speak to Ezekiel. The Spirit of the Lord fell upon me and he said, Speak, thus said the Lord. Thus you have said, O house of Israel, I know the things to come in your mind. You have multiplied your slain in the city. You have filled the streets with slain. Ezekiel 11, 5 and 6. The Spirit speak the truth that Ezekiel concerning what took place in the house of Israel. God the Father speak to Ezekiel. Therefore, that says the Lord God. You slain whom you have laid in the maids and their meat for the city is a cauldron. You shall know that I am God. So, previous slide, we see Jesus and the Spirit. And now, the Father and the Spirit. We find that multiple in the New Testament. The Father speak, the Spirit speak. Jesus speak, the Holy Spirit speak. We need to understand this, my brothers and sisters, because this is a plain truth. Let us look at again, Christ and Spirit speak during the during time of Exodus. On the premise that God who directed in Exodus in the time of Moses is Jesus. This is clear in Hebrews. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called son of a daughter, Peros daughter, choosing rather to suffer the people of God to enjoy the passing pleasure of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater than the riches of the treasures of Egypt. Who was the God during the Exodus? Christ. And so, we need to look at again. Nehemiah 9, 19 and 20. It says, Yet in your manifold mercies, you did not forsake them in the wilderness. The pillar of cloud did not depart from them by day to lead them to the road. Now the pillar of fire by night to show them the light and the way that they should go. And you give your good spirit to instruct them. Who instructed? The spirit. Who was the God? Both. The Son and the Holy Spirit side by side working in the time of Exodus. This is we need to understand. The problem is that there is a theology of understanding that in the Old Testament it is the Father wrong. Read carefully so that you may understand what is the revelation. Okay? Look at this. In Isaiah 63, verses 10, 11, and 14. But they revealed His, that is Christ, His Holy Spirit. So He turned Himself against them as an enemy, and He fought against them. Then He remembered the days of old, Moses and His people, saying, Where is He who brought us out of the sea with the shepherd of His flock? They are looking for Jesus, and He said, Where is He, that is Christ, Holy Spirit within them. 
abyss goes down into the valley and the spirit of the Lord causes him to rest. So you lead your people to make yourself a glorious name. Again, this is coming in the New Testament. The same revelation. The Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, let's look at here in the New Testament. Okay? I would sidetrack from the Old Testament. Because in the Old Testament, the Father speak, the Son speak, the Holy Spirit speak. And then the Father and the Son. Then the Son and the Spirit. That's why I entitled this one, Oneness, Toneness, Threeness, Revelation of God. Because sometimes there is only one. Sometimes the Father and Son. Sometimes the Father and Spirit. Or sometimes the Son and the Spirit. Listen here. The Holy Spirit speak in the Gospels. Now when they brought you to the synagogue, my resist and authority, don't worry how you would answer or to what would you say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that very hour what you ought to say. For it will be given to you what should be you speak. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speak it to you. Mark 10, 19 and 20. As you learn the meekness and the lowliness of Christ, you will know that you should say to the people, for the Holy Spirit will tell you what words you ought to speak. Those who realize the necessity of keeping the heart, under the control of the Holy Spirit, be able to sow the seed, will spring into eternal life. You shall receive power, page 179. So the Holy Spirit, Mark declares, for David himself said, the Holy Spirit, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand, till I make your enemies footstool. And the common people heard him gladly. Mark 12, 36. The Holy Spirit speaks. But when they arrest you and deliver you up, don't worry beforehand or premeditate what you speak. But whatever is given to you that hour, speak. For it is not you speak, but the Holy Spirit. I cannot reconcile that. Fire, influence, wind can speak. You are walking in the darkness rather than in the light. This is a clear, clear liberation. David in Psalms are spoken by the Holy Spirit. He says that. Mark declares, for David himself said by the Holy Spirit, the Lord sit at my Lord. So meaning to say, when Peter says that, Men, brethren, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became the guide of those who arrested Jesus. We find that in Acts. So who talk about the betrayal of Judas? It is the Holy Spirit. So because the Holy Spirit speak. In other words, the Spirit or the Holy Spirit is co-equal with God. Peter continues in his sermon, Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, having received the Father promise of Holy Spirit, he poured into that now you see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, but he says himself, The Lord said to my Lord. So this was a fulfillment. So the repetition that the Holy Spirit spoke to David, but when you read and analyze the text, confirm that the Holy Spirit inspired David in writing the psalm, in spite of the fact that the word spirit is absent. Instead, use the word the Lord or God. This also confirms that the Lord and God and spirit are terms of co-equal as God. Let's look at in the book of Acts. While Peter was in a vision, the Spirit said to him, Whoa, this is in the conversion of Cornelius. What the Holy Spirit? The Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. This is clear. 
there's, there's no different things between Old and New Testament. The Spirit speak, directed, commanded, instructed. Here we find. And now the minister to the Lord Jesus and pasted. The Holy Spirit said, Now separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. The Holy Spirit separated Paul and Barnabas, which he called to do the ministry. So they are being sent out by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was actively involved, especially during the Pentecost. Ma, it's also working active in the Old Testament. Look at again. When they have gone to Ragia and region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. But the Spirit did not permit them. How could you win your fire, your influence, your power can permit and forbid in doing the work of God? I think you need to re-educate your mind how to read spiritual things. Look at again. When Paul was bound, said thus the say thus says the holy spirit so shall the jews in jerusalem bind the man his own belt and deliver him in the hands of the gentiles acts 21 9 to 11. it's clear just like the old testament that says the lord that says the holy spirit therefore i make known to you no one speaking by the spirit of god called jesus a curse no one can say the lord jesus except by the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, 3. And so, I'm now discussing the two-ness of God. Meaning, two person, but not identified. Okay? So, the God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Genesis 1, 26. Then the Lord said, Behold, the man become like one of us. Who know good and evil? Genesis 3.22 Come, let us go down and confuse their language. Genesis 11.7 And Isaiah said, I hear the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And whom we will go for us? This is clear. The oneness and the plurality of God. Because the word us is in the second person. Plural. That's a basic English. But here it's not clear where the Holy Spirit is. But look. The Father and the Son. And the Son is not called Son, but he said, My servant. The roots, okay? Look at this one. Behold, my servant, that is God the Father. So the servant is the Messiah. Shall deal prudently, and he shall be exalted and extolled very high. Isaiah 52, 13. For he, the Messiah, shall grow up before him, the Father, as a tender plant. Again, Yet it pleased the Lord the Father to bruise him, the Son. He, the Father, has put him, the Son, to grip, to make his soul an offering for sin. That's clear. Here, Tonis, I mean Father and Son. Look at again another Tonis or Tonity, Father and Spirit. Look at here. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me, and the word was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel, he who rules over men must be just ruling the fear of God. Close proximity, the Spirit and God the Father. Look at there in verse 5. Although my house is not so with God, yet he has made an everlasting covenant Order all things and secure, for this is all my salvation, all my desire. He will not make it an increase. Second Samuel 23, verses 4 and 5. 
Let's look at again, Father and Spirit. Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, receive into your heart my words that I speak to you, and hear your ears. Thus says the Lord God, that's the Father, whether they hear or whether they refuse. Then the Spirit lifted me up behind me in a great thunder house, and a voice, blessed is the glory of the Lord from his place. I also heard the noise of the wings. So verse 14, so the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went into bitterness, and the heat of my spirit on the hand, the Lord was strong. This clear. Look at again in Isaiah 44, 3. I will pour my spirit to your descendant, my blessing to your offspring. Who is this? God the Father and the Spirit. They are working side by side. So this is a revelation. This is not knowledge. So let us now go to the Trinity. Okay, let's look. Then God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. That is Genesis 1.26. We, we do not know what is really who is this like us, but we know that God is God the Father. But look at on verse 2. And the Spirit of God hovering the face of waters. So he was talking to his son because we find that in the story of redemption. We find that in the creation of man. That God told his son, let us make man. But the Holy Spirit was involved. So in Genesis 3, Father, Son, and Spirit involved in creation. And so, look at that. By his Spirit, he adorned the heavens. Job 26, 13. That is creation. You sent forth your spirit, and they were created, and you renew the face of the earth. Psalm 104, 13. Clean. The Father and the Son involved in creation. So how can we deny such? Look at again. Ezekiel 48, verses 16 and 17. Behold, my servant, that is his son, whom I, the father, uphold my elect one, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit on him. Because we read that. God the Father sent the Son, sent the Holy Spirit. Give the Son, give the Spirit. He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. Verses, chapter Isaiah 44, verse 1. But you can see also verse 5, where the Spirit is mentioned. Come near to me here. I have not spoken the secret from the beginning. From the time it was, I was there. Now the Lord God and His Spirit have sent me. So how many is this? The Father, His Spirit, also sent Christ. Thus says the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way that you should go. Isaiah 48, 16 and 17 are clear revelation of Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but it's not the Son. It is the servant, the Spirit. This is a clear teaching. For God the Father said, Surely they are my people, children who will not lie. So he became their Savior, and their affection was afflicted, and the angel of his presence, that is Christ, saved them in his love, in his pity. It's his Father and Son. Isaiah 63, 8, uh, uh, 8 and 9. God the Father is mentioned in verse 16. Doubtless you are our father, through Abraham, was ignorant of us, and Israel acknowledged us. O Lord, our Father, our Redeemer, everlasting is your name. Let's look at the Holy Spirit. But they rebuild and grieve His Holy Spirit, so they turn Himself. So the Holy Spirit is there, mentioned. 
In Isaiah 63, there's a clear. So the Godhead reveals into oneness, twoness, and threeness of God. What I mean, sometime in the Bible, only one God is mentioned on the text. Sometimes the Father and Son, the servant. Sometimes the Father and Spirit. And sometimes the angel of the Lord and the Spirit. Here is the revelation of God. So clear. So I said, God reveals into oneness, toneness, and the threeness of God. In the Old Testament, it is clear that unless we understand the Bible that there is one God in three persons who manifests to humankind as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we are reading and understand revelation of God in veracity. The New Testament simply follows. Follow what the revelation God in the Old Testament, but in a fuller light of the truth. The unity, the solidarity of oneness, toneness, and threeness of God had been presented in the Old Testament. Only one God. The Father, the Son, Father and Spirit, Son and Spirit. Keep on recurring in the Old Testament much more in the New. So, I want to recapitulate. In Genesis, reveal oneness and plurality of God in three events. Creation, fall of man, dispersion after the flood. That's why it says, let us, one of us, let us come down. And so it is also mentioned. I am the Lord. There's none, no other. There is no other God besides me. For you are great. And do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. Psalm 86.10 He is God. There is no other besides Him. So it reveals only one Father. Have we not all one Father? Has not one God created us? That is Malachi 2.10 The same Paul says in Ephesians 4.6 One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in all. So the Father and Son is mentioned. So, we need to understand that this revelation is so important for us. The revelation of the Father and Spirit is clear in Samuel and in Ezekiel. The trainings of God is clear in the book of Isaiah 48, 16, 63 verses 9 and 10, and 63, 16, 11, and 64, 8. Let me conclude. The oneness and the toneness and the threeness of God's revelation has been demonstrated both Old and New Testament. Therefore, those who allegedly claim that triunity of God could not be defended by the scripture is a false claim. Only liberation of God can solve this mystery of God. Human philosophy, logic, wisdom, presupposition should bow before the holy majesty of divine revelation. There is only one God manifested, revealed as God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. We have presented the Trinity in the Old Testament is equally presenting the same trinity in the New Testament. I hope, my brothers and sisters, when you listen to people who talk about, go to the Bible and verify. Do not accept anything that is outside the Scripture. Because when you do so, God will guide you and you will understand that in the end, God is one. They are manifested in the person of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These are truth that we need to understand in the end time because the enemy is making a lot of false winds of doctrine that confuse and destroy us. And in the end, we lost confidence 
in Scripture, we lost our trust and hope in Scripture. In the end, we are lost. May God bless us all. Thank you.